Okay, good morning. Um, I'm going to make a short video. Uh, what we're going to do today, after that though, is we're just going to practice naming ionic compounds and their associated compounds. Practice that today, go over tomorrow, and for Friday, uh, I'd like to have a quiz, usual Friday quiz on just naming things. That last quiz I still have to look at here. I apologize, I haven't had a chance. I'll probably check that out later when I'm on prep and get those grades in. But that was an easy one. I'm sure everyone did did fine on that one. Um, okay, so where are we? Now, just keep, let's keep things in mind. Nomenclature. We are in this realm. You may want to write this down. We have not started here. Oh, covalent. We're going to get to that uh, probably Thursday. Now, ionic, we talked about binary and polyatomic ions. Okay. Now, under binary and polyatomic, we have two things. We have uh, transition metals. and also antimony, lead, and, and tin. And then we have main group metals for cations. Same thing over here. We, I'm going to put TM for transition metals and main group for main group metals. Now, don't forget the transition metals, uh, the exceptions being zinc uh, and silver, they need... Roman numerals, when you name them. You need that parentheses with the Roman numerals. These, no need for parentheses. So, for example, if I have TiCl4, we have to write titanium 4 chloride because titanium can get more than one charge. Uh, if we have like a sodium chloride, oops, we just write sodium chloride. So this is where we're, we've been we've been focusing our time. Remember, for the polyatomic ions, you use your chart, and that chart has the name right on there. And then for for um, the binary ones, if you have an anion formed from an element, you know oxygen becomes oxide, phosphorus becomes phosphide, etc., etc., etc. Now Thursday we're going to get to naming these other types of compounds, covalent. But before we leave ionic compounds, I need to tell you about two things. One, you really need to know about this next type of a compound before we get into lab for our next uh, lab, or lab after next, actually. There's a certain type of ionic compounds. These are ionic, and they are called hydrates. Hydrates. Now, what hydrates are, are a special type of um, ionic compound where water molecules are somehow embedded in the crystal of the of the ionic compound. We're going to get more into structure when we get to that point. But you can kind of think of ionic compounds as being cations and anions on a certain crystal in a certain crystal structure. And if I have water molecules in there, for example, I have a chemical compound like this. If I looked at that, that's just going to be copper 2 sulfate. But if you see it written like this, with a big dot, if you see an ionic compound with a big dot and some water molecules, this is called a hydrate. Now, hydrates are pretty interesting because if we heat these things up, which is exactly what we're going to do lab after next, that little triangle above the arrow means heat, you're going to get something pretty interesting you're going to get copper sulfate plus five waters that sort of cook off. And we're going to get more into the technicalities of this. But this compound here is a beautiful blue color. It's blue. And just by heating it up, we drive those water molecules out, and we get this white, this gray, white compound. 
Okay. Now this is called a hydrate, and this is called the anhydrous version. Or anhydrate. And meaning without. So when we name these, there are certain series of compounds where these water molecules kind of get trapped in the crystal of the copper sulfate. And again, I'm simplifying things. But we call these by a name. We, we say the same name as we usually say here, copper 2. Remember, copper is a transition metal, sulfate. But we have to indicate how many waters we have. So we we call five, and don't worry, I'll make a list of all these things, penta, penta hydrate. So the name of that compound is copper 2-sulfate pentahydrate. And uh, we'll go back and, and we can look later on at, at the example of this compound. Like I said, beautiful royal blue color, and it, it turns into this white color when you heat it. So that's an example of one. Let me give you some other examples. We have this compound, and you should be able to recognize this as magnesium sulfate. And then I've got some more water here, and it's going to be something hydrate. Now, what is 7? Well, we don't know this yet, but 7 is hepta, heptahydrate. So this compound would be magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. So I want to make a list of all of the different uh, prefaces that we would use to indicate numbers of hydrates. And then when you see some of these, they're going to be very easy. So let me make you a list. So one water would be mono, monohydrate, two dihydrate, if I have three waters, that's going to be trihydrate. Four is tetrahydrate. Five, penta. Six is hexa. Seven is hepta. Eight, what do you think eight might be? Octa. Octa, yeah. Octahydrate. Anyone want to guess what nine is? Anyone have an Italian grandmother? You don't have a Nona? Okay, it's Nona. And then ten. What do you think ten might be? Deca. Yeah, decahydrate. So if we saw some compound like, uh, oh, let me see here. Uh, let's just say we have uh, SNBr2.2H2O. Well, what are we going to call this? What's SN? Remember? No, it's one of those weird ones whose name doesn't match the symbol. It's tin. Yep. So tin 2 bromide dihydrate. And that's all there is to it. That's Those are naming hydrates. And good morning, Dr. Kummel. And the reason we do this is because when we go into laboratory, we're going to be able to take these chemical compounds and um, do a little experiment on them. And I think uh, when we get to that point, you're going to see. So that's it for this very short video. It's only nine minutes. And... Uh,